Hey, get back here. So, you probably saw my all-time favorite or most busted cards on offense in Madden. Mostly Madden Ultimate Team, as there are a lot of, like, old-school Madden cards that were, or, sorry, players that were great. But I was a franchise player back then and didn't really play regs online because I don't find it interesting. And most of my, you know, greatest players all-time are fictional players that only mean something to me. But, these Madden Ultimate Team cards, there's a, a lot of shared devastation from them from offensive and defensive players alike for the size of the balls that we've going through but i want to go through why these are my number ones and when they came out a lot of cards on these lists that i've gone through ended up causing a nerf in one way to something or another or if they came out near the end of the year like some of the gold tickets they just kind of stayed busted and they were just like overpowered as madden generally like how they balance their game is just release one overpowered thing or after another and then hopefully the newest overpowered thing uh, beats the last lower power thing, but some of these guys really did tip the scales too hard and Something some of it got nerfed, but we'll go through, each, go through each one and go through how they changed the game what they did and so on and so forth So let's start with uh, let's just start with a secondary at free safety. Let's go. Let's go top to bottom All right, so free safety Megatron. We'll start right there um, Megatron, okay, everybody knows this is basically an every year thing I'm not gonna say this one particular Madden 15 Megatron is the greatest Megatron golden ticket of all time, but he's just an example of what kind of domination free safety Megatrons have had. Uh, and, and I mean, you can argue that Madden 18 Mutt Master Sean Taylor would be the free safety, but I think just how much uh, like free safety Megatron has dominated. I feel like his height has just made him special. Speed, spec catch, does everything. Even has block shed here in this card, zone coverage. Man coverage in this one, not great. We've seen high man coverage on other Megatron cards. But yes, Megatron himself at free safety with the added height allowing to like, you know, stop uh, everything from like, you know, uh, receptions on the field on the sideline, uh, egg catches, uh, 16 this 16 card I, I believe yeah this is Madden 15 sorry Madden 15 card to help a little bit against the face catchers so he's been pretty versatile his entire career back there for every single year that they've had golden tickets are out of position Megatron whether it's if it's a blitz everybody meta which basically every year is you just use your him and then make your opponent cry a little bit when they try to throw anywhere on the field so free city Megatron broken in the most broken sense of the word because of how good he is but strong safety all right going back to the team i'm gonna go with mutt master pat tillman from madden 20 and you're gonna ask yourself well why mutt master pat tillman he's just okay right now well when he first launched he was basically a one-man run defense as we'll just go up to 95 overall so pre-nerf to enforce and a lot of these cards you know like i talked about brought a lot of nerfs into the game and 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 when i talk about like the most devastating cards of all time it's like pre-nerf right Pre them getting actually fixed by the game developers, this card was run defense. With with the enforcer on him, if your running back ran at him early in the year, and if, if you know the opponent had Mutt Master uh, Pat Tillman, which not a lot of people had it earlier in the year, he basically caused a fumble, right? It was like you know 50-50 chance. Obviously, enforcers got nerfed, hit sticks don't uh, cause as many fumbles anymore. But when it was there and powerful. Oh my god, you wanted to avoid this card also. Anybody that, and then more people started putting enforcers on. You saw some on uh, uh, middle linebackers. He's like, just just avoid. Do not try and go down. Do not take any hits from Tillman. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's how the game happens. Like, you, like, superstars legitimately play like superstars, which was their goal. But this one played a little bit too much like a superstar. So, yeah, that Pat Tillman was uh, something else. All right, let's go. I guess we'll go straight along the top row. Harvest Lawrence Taylor from Madden 19. Okay, so Harvest Lawrence Taylor. What what's so big? What's a big deal about him? Well, you could put out my way on him, and that was great too. But just the card itself, you wouldn't you weren't able to run that side of the year, right? 19 was a lot of crossers, that kind of stuff. There was a little bit of running, of course, but to his side of the ball, with the amount with how quickly he shed, with the amount of blocks he got off of, even the pass rush pressure. The pass rush pressure in Madden 19 wasn't great. When Lawrence Taylor first launched, he had good pressure. He was basically the only card last year, outside of maybe a couple others, early in the year, that actually got past this pressure. By the end of the year, offense alignment caught up to power moves and stuff. So 96 power move, which you could boost, uh, finesse move. At that time, you actually saw a legitimate pass rush. But after that, once Lyman started catching up to 96, high 90s, 
you didn't see that anymore right you didn't see any of that stuff late in the year so it became much more crossover based even though early in the year it was crossover based like Tyree Hill uh, which we talked about in the last video so this Lawrence Taylor an absolute against the run stud against the pass as good as it got all year was this guy and for that reason he's there right he's basically my favorite Lawrence Taylor's and all the mutts that I've played maybe he's had better cards in the past and you know definitely let me know in the comment section which one of these you disagree with this Lawrence Taylor was a better Lawrence Taylor's because generally later in the year when cards come out because Lawrence Taylor always gets better cards right he just got a better card Madden 20 than stats like this but a lot of other cards have caught up to him he no longer like stands out like Lawrence Taylor stands out whereas this card legitimately played like Lawrence Taylor on a field of superstars he was better than everybody else the only time I've had a Lawrence Taylor card where I was like Oh my God, this guy is it just makes amazing plays. Absolutely, absolutely fucks offensive linemen and players up. Okay, so next card on our list, we'll go middle linebackers. I'm gonna go Ryan Shazier as the Mutt Master from 19. Why? Because do you remember Lurks last year in 19? Shazier, and then like later in the year, like when when he first came out and people started getting this Mutt Master card. Ooh, where is it? Is it right here? I, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what speed. Oh, that's a little high. I think it might be like right here, probably like right there. Then we got a couple upgrades. So when this card came out, I wasn't like I was shocked with the amount of plays you make. Obviously, later in the year when a lot more cards started getting a lot better, like jumping uh, and speed, agility, all that stuff. But when he came out and his ability to jump and snatch balls 15 yards behind his head basically nerfed linebackers for Madden 20 where they can't jump at all. This card and his ability to kind of basically shut down the middle of the field that we haven't seen since like, you know, I guess we have seen it quite a bit. We'll, we'll get into one in a second. But we've seen it quite a bit. But this Shaz, that early in the year, being that dominant, just like absolutely like just stealing seam passes, dominating the entire middle, being able to like fill run gaps, get back to post patterns, ruin your life, affected the game. Whereas in 20, we can't do that anymore. So this Shaz, I think, was, was the most powerful middle linebacker I've played with. The middle linebacker was kind of a hard spot. I actually ended up going with two. You only see one on my list, but I say like a backup guy would be Ray Lewis. Uh, you can argue with other outside linebackers like, you know, users over the course of the year, like Anthony Barr uh, was a great user over the years, but he's kind of like an outside backer. Ray Lewis, when he came out, he basically became the best middle linebacker when he came out in Madden 18 uh, at Halloween, it's most feared promo. He was the best linebacker until like February, I believe that game, January, February. So he was legitimately number one, both run, a block shed and speed. He was like the number one linebacker for like four months, which is pretty rare in Madden to have a card stay number one for that long. Of course, there are some masters that do that. You know, the, the ones that come around around Halloween, Thanksgiving generally have a little bit longer of a lifetime. And Ray Lewis, you know, proved it at Halloween this year. Physical front could add extra hit power. Uh, you know, tier five, I think was added later in the year to bring him up to 99 block shed, 98 hit power. If I recall, that might've been added, you know, January, new year-ish. Uh, he had secure tackler, which is basically, you know, two hand touch. Once you touch the running back, they go down. So that was hot. So tackling didn't really matter, but yeah, Ray Lewis busted through blocks, got to, uh, running backs and, and took them down a great card and, and really was a staple of a lot of lines for a long time in 18. Otherwise, I, I don't know, I, I wasn't able to find a lot of middle linebackers I love. Like I talked about tons of users, right? Uh, uh, Nate Askew, I was trying to remember, Nate Askew was an outside linebacker, right outside linebacker. I kind of already went through the right outside linebackers. Nate Askew was a 57 overall, six foot four, launched with like 90 speed. I'll show him, he was, a, uh, I'll show, he was like a budget god. I did like two videos on it, became a salary cap god. We also saw other free safety salary cap gods. We all know the, uh, uh, well, sorry, 92 speed on Nate Askew, 95 acceleration on him. So yeah, at 6'4", this was a user god early in the year and then later when salary cap took over. So I love Nate Askew, one of those Madden 16 gods for outside linebacker. Um, another uh, Jack Ham, Madden 15 Jack Ham was another beast and he was a beast of a different matter, 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 right? Right outside linebacker, Lawrence Taylor, we got that guy for a, for a pass rusher, run stopper. Jack Ham is like the only 4-3 linebacker where you drop into coverage, legitimately played smart. Madden 15, before they switched off play rec for 16, I believe it was, where you no longer recognize plays or, or, or I think, I have to go back and look at my testing videos. They changed something going into 16. And then zones, I think, going into 17. 
Oh no, zones have even changed it in 16 too. That's something I, I, I misremember. But I just remember, 99 Play Rec played like it. He legitimately, with his 99 Play Rec, 99 Pursuit, was around the ball basically every play. And he, he just, he read things. I was like, back when Madden played pretty well with that kind of stuff, with, with intelligence, at least it did better than now, Jack Hand was it. And I, I sorely missed this card. And I don't know if we'll ever see another card like it. I mean, eventually they'll fix linebacker smarts, right? Eventually they'll fix pursuit, right? Please, pretty please make awareness, play rec, pursuit, matter more than they matter right now. Smartless linebackers, please, please EA, please. But anyways, Jack Ham was phenomenal right outside linebacker as, as kind of a, uh, a, a, a n nomination to it. Otherwise, Madden 16 had Aaron Lynch. And Aaron Lynch, you're like, what? This guy doesn't look special. 99 acceleration, he basically made nanos work. Aaron Lynch was on my list. He almost beat it over Lawrence Taylor because of nanos. This guy subbed in that right end. You use like a dime flat nano. He just he just slides that line. He was fucking insane. A lot of people had him. It, it was either this card or his 84 overall football outsiders. And you're like, oh god, I'm facing a nano air. Aaron Lynch. He just He was so fast off the line of scrimmage. It was it was it was something else. It was mad old Maddens because they had nanos sucked. They, man, nanos people talk think of old Maddens, they sucked. They sucked because of nanos, uh, and we didn't have as much blocking tools as we have now. But anyways, those are kind of like nominations for linebackers. And then uh, last linebacker, the last one I wanted to get through was the Julius Peppers, the Madden 15 Julius Peppers from Football Outsiders. His stats. As one of my starters, 90 speed, 95 acceleration. This came out, uh, what was it? April, January, January, I think it came out. But basically what you do is you'd stand near the line of scrimmage and they'd throw a ball 20, like a, a lot of lurks get picked off 15 yards, right? We've seen that issue. This guy legitimately picked them off 20 yards behind him. So the quarterback would throw and at six, seven frame because linebackers could animate then and, they, and Pepper's really animated. You, you just sit and spy and you just pick that ball off. It was disgusting. Go back and look at my review on him. Look at all this stuff. This crazy, this, this guy was unreal. Plus he had speed and acceleration if you decided to run across the field with him too, to jump other routes. Yeah, sick, sick. Good hit power, great hit power. Good block shed. You could also, I guess, you know, actually use him as a pass rusher. So very flexible card too. And that's why he is going to be my, oh, that was kind of like a thing to look at old cards for. Uh, that That's why this is my linebacker core. Taylor, Peppers, Shaz, Overpower, then maybe Ray Lewis there too. So we went through the top. Let's go through the bottom. Night Train Lane as my CB1. So Night Train Lane and Madden 16. He comes out, you're like, oh, Night Train Lane. He looks kind of neat. So 95 speed on him. You're like, ah, oh, solid, I guess. But then he comes out with 99 hit power. He had 99 zone, 94 man, 91 press. You know, this is this is like, what, the day after Thanksgiving this guy comes out? And he's basically endgame. And you can play him at safety with 99 hit power. Do jack some guys up. Right? Almost no weaknesses. Freaking amazing. This card, it, it was on my squad until the next night train lane came out. Right? An epitome. Uh, I guess he epitomized like a CB3, a nickel type of player. Uh, but you could play him outside with his speed because a 95 speed when he came out was pretty close to top end, right? The fastest guys were 97. So you couldn't like, you didn't love to press them, of course, but I think uh, you could basically put them outside too. And I don't think you'd worry that much with it. So Madden 16, Night Train Lane, this guy an absolute force of nature. And Night Train Lane's generally been a force of nature, but to launch a 99 hit power, kind of crazy. All right, and then my CB next to him, we have Madden 17, Secure Tackler, Deion Sanders. So let's take a look at that Madden 17, Deion Sanders. There's a reason I put him at nickel in front of Night Train Lane. Otherwise, Night Train Lane would be in a base package nickel. Deion Sanders, Madden 17, with Secure Tackler as your nickel blitz. Nickel blitz was eventually unblockable, right? People go back like, oh, I, I see this shit still. Madden 17 was so good, it requires so much user skill. Nickel blitz made terrible, terrible players into great defenders because of this one card, because of his speed, acceleration, agility. Just sit on the nickel blitz because we didn't have ID the mic, we couldn't take him away. It was, it was unblockable, and he got your quarterback. 
and then he had Secure Tackler. You know what I said about that uh, Draft Cam Newton Madden 17 in the last video? This basically made, this nullified that. Secure Tackler just took him down. Uh, running offenses in 17 late in the year, it's like, why even try, right? Just run the ball. Because your pass game's gonna get nickel blitzed. Nickel blitz was even good run defense, which was the horrible part about it. So nickel blitz is probably the worst blitz I've ever faced in my life. And even though there's some mean ones in 16, 15, uh, nickel blitz is probably up there, we'll just say. And this card made it even worse. So that's why he is there. Just just overpowered nonsense, that card epitomized. And, and you know, they ended up bringing ID the mic in the next year and, and took care a little bit of that nickel blitz action. Pat Pete, 99 overall golden ticket. Now, for those who remember, Patrick Peterson from Madden 15, he was the reason we only we can only make one. I think I think he was the reason, but there were two Patrick Petersons made that year. This is the one they made with hit power, the extra hit power one. The other one was made with extra awareness. Either one of them are great. 101 speed, and there's debate out there whether 101 speed actually matters. Uh, I never actually tested it myself, but there's some debate whether it actually worked over 99. But anyways, fast. Decent size and Pat Pete just seems to make plays out there. All right. He's got great uh, Everything even after catching the ball returning the ball basically the Deion Sanders plus man coverage zone coverage press hit power even on this card so This Patrick Peterson while people when he when he came out people weren't pleased He still is probably one of the best corners all time and I had a, I had a tough time Deciding on corners which I thought were the glitchiest all times but Madden 15 16 17 those three this one, because his speed was just about as fast as everyone always, plus the hit power on the golden ticket. So Pat Pete, back back in the day though, man coverage also worked. So like you would lock somebody down. I, could, I was thinking about doing more Deion Sanders's because back in the day, you know, early when it came out and you had those high man coverage stats, you just call like two men under and you'd be done, right? Like look how many negative votes he has because two golden tickets came out of the same player. So that's why the rules changed for Pat Pete, but he was still God tier. All right, back to my greatest team all time. Khalil Mack at right end in Madden 16. The reason he's here is because of Nanos again. Na Nanos were basically the game back in the day. If you didn't have a Nano, you're gonna get Nano and you're just gonna lose and you're gonna be angry at the game. 95 acceleration, 90 speed. There was a DTA gap. I think Stiff sprung it on problem in the championship. I had seen it before that and I'd used it and I was like, wow, this is actually freaking amazing. And, and Stiff found it and probably didn't have an answer for it. I believe he used this Khalil Mack and this Khalil Mack with a speed acceleration at D tackle in the A gap was fucking furious because you wouldn't even be able to like finish your drop back and he'd be hitting you. So he was a mean card and using an overpowered mechanic with an overpowered card just ends up being degenerative as we talked about and this squad is full of degens because I'm a degen from up north. So another another degen for our degen squad our degen defenses. The most degenerative. Warren Sapp from Madden 20. I have it right here. I don't know how this guy does it, but every game, abilities or no, this guy is just getting off blocks and getting to my quarterbacks. There's nothing here that I'm like, oh, this is unusual. Sure, he's a little faster than a lot of them, but like John Randall's up there. A lot of cards are up there. You can put a defensive ends there that are faster. But there's some reason, uh, with abilities, it's even worse. But he's just splitting double teams. Madden 20 double team splits, happen way more often than banana splits, right? Double teams, for some reason, work as well as single blocking in this game. It's pathetic, the fact that they can get through double teams that easy. Of the greatest offensive lineman in history. Throw a couple of D-line abilities on it, this guy is gonna wreck shit in the middle. Defensive ends, you can say the same thing. I almost, you, know, you almost wanna do a full Madden 20 defensive line because of how quickly they get through just doing regular, regular rushers. So Warren Sapp, for that purpose, and he's the best defensive tackle I've seen all year with this stuff. He just, he just causes headaches and I hate him. I absolutely fucking hate this card. And that's why he's on my D-Gen squad. The greatest mud cards of all time. Madden 18, Mean Joe Green is also on this squad because basically you throw him in the middle, secure tackler, he had physical front. So when you actually put it up there, 99 block shed, tackle, hit power. He basically made 335 run D, uh, which became the meta at the end of 18. Amazing, he sucked up double teams, shed players, got tackles, allowed you to shoot gaps really easily. 3 the 5 if you recall, the end of 18 was very hard to block because of the way you lined up that blitzing corner. And uh, power move 97 too, did pretty, pretty well itself. So this Mean Joe Green, I loved it. I think he had like the best chem because he had physical front. 
Uh, blanket coverage was solid, but not amazing. I don't know, not many, not many people ran man coverage in 18. So blanket coverage maybe could have been better. But uh, yeah, physical front, secure tackler. And he was uh, da bomb, as they say. So we got a stealer on the squad. Was that my first stealer? That might be my first stealer on the squad. Oh, cool. Stealer hype. And then left end, Zadarius Smith. Look at the stats that go on this left end. This is much like the left tackle, Jason Peters and Tyron Smith. The Madden 16, like I said, was the last of the budget years where budget cards actually had good stats. So he 87 overall, and he had 86 speed, 93 acceleration, strength, which it doesn't mean as much as it should. Power move, block shed 95, 87 overall. Right this year, this would be like a 95, right? <laughs> this is insane for a cheap 87. So a lot of people ran for these guys in the defensive lines, and really he played amazing. So I, I think it's just it's just iconic how good that was, how good this card was, and there's not much more to say about it. A cheap superstar that's always got to play so in the hall in the Mutt Hall of Fame. So this is my all-time Mutt squad for defense. You guys saw the offense one last video. I can show them both again. Shout out. Oh, I also forgot about Madden 18, Ken Houston. Man 18, Ken Houston is a shout out for strong safety because it's first DB to get unfakeable to contain Barry Sanders on that spin move. So there's a shout out to him in 18. I can show his card quick if you guys want to see. But yeah, this Ken Houston basically was brought into the game with unfakeable to try and try and stop spin moves. And they ended up having to nerf the spin anyways, even after unfakeable. But uh, yeah, I liked it. There's the defense to sum it up. Uh, I guess I can show the offense too. Um, but uh, here's here's the spreadsheet I used. I can make this available in the uh, link in the description below. I'll put it in the offensive one if I remember after this video. Uh, but yeah, there you go. <sighs> what do you guys think I fucked up on? Oh wait, here are the offensive linemen too. I forgot to go over the extras last video. But anyways, love y'all. Take it easy. See you tomorrow.